Welcome to the Catalyst Show. My name is Penny from the Racial Justice Network. And today we're going to be speaking to two guests. Uh, one is uh, Mama D, who's um, attended or been an interviewee or participant to the radio for quite a while. Um, and the second person is my mum, um, Dr. Christine Kahigi, um, who has also participated in the radio program. Uh, in terms of content, we will be talking about uh, Carnival, because for our listeners, I think particularly people in Bradford, um, we know this weekend is going to be uh, the Leeds Carnival and a lot of movement between Bradford and Leeds. So we'll be talking about a little bit about Carnival, where it came from, what it means um, and all of that stuff. And then we'll also be talking about um, an upcoming symposium or international symposium that the Racial Justice Network is going to be holding and this will be in um, October and we have a, a delegation of well, nearly 10 people uh, coming and and so we'll be talking a little bit more about that we'll be talking about that um, uh, with uh, Dr Christine uh, because she's one of the participants or one of the people attending. I should also mention I'm actually recording this show uh, from Kenya, where I am at the moment. Uh, but I thought even though I'm traveling and I'm away, that it's still worth doing a recording today. So welcome, Mama D. I'll welcome Dr. Christine later on, but welcome, Mama D. Um, and you can say quick hellos and tell us a little bit about your organization community community centered knowledge and what you do and then we'll crack on with the show greetings penny <laughs> all the way there in kenya um we're calling from here um in the uk um where there's a little bit of a little glimmer of sun community centered knowledge is about reaffirming the knowledge the science the deep art practice of the community and its importance um, and role in shaping our societies and which it has done from time immemorial, but it needs to be reaffirmed and recognized uh, again, um, re-experienced and, and made more powerful. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Um, and I know also uh, with the invitation was the topic, um, I should say, yeah, it felt really poignant and, and important to speak to you about Carnival. And I know you say there's still much more that could be read into or shared. Um, but my understanding, maybe just for context, is I think I experienced Carnival when I first arrived in North Yorkshire. And I was uh, shocked. <laughs> um, a dancing, the amount of people that tend to be there, um, the the music, just the sense of kind of culture that comes with carnival, um, and you know, like the amount of stuff that sold, the, and I, and I mean business. So I think I'm not sure what the number is, but there's quite a high number of people that attend carnival, carnival um, that in, in the thousands. So uh, the interest was to kind of find out, um, just, just hearing about the numbers, but also just the realization that what it actually means, because it happens once a year, um, the last bank holiday in August. So it was, what, what does it mean? Um, and then I attended a show uh, that was um, being shown, I think it was a documentary in Leeds, that gave a little context to the history and the meaning of carnival. And I was really perplexed because I was like, I was not aware that this is where it comes from because we just see procession and people dancing and lots and lots of tracks. Um, but there's also like the festival and the food. So um, I'm interested in really exploring that, Mama D. Uh, and maybe also, because um, I know I think they did a, I don't know how many years anniversary, a couple of years ago, um, the connection between Leeds Carnival to mm -hmm. Nottingham to Grace Jones. It'd be nice if you can kind of like touch on all of those things. 
Yeah, greetings. I, I want to admit I'm no expert on carnival, but I will tell you what um, <laughs> comes from this, um, what I would declare to be community knowledge. So um, really a deep reflection on carnival mustn't locate it. Um, its origins to the UK because yeah here is a place where although yes as African people we've been here for you know hundreds of thousands of years um, you know people have dated it to you know um, the Romans uh, the Africans that came with the um, the movement of Romans there are others who, who dated even earlier but Really, we need to locate the origins of carnival in our African celebrations of the changing of seasons. And with a change of seasons always comes like a, a, a change of focus and a re-emphasizing of things that we need to learn and gather from the moment of change. So taking that to the spread of the the classic as some people call it African diaspora through the the Mangamizi and um, other well Mangamizi and the east and the west coasts of Africa and and elsewhere that you had the the widespread global movement of African peoples and in terms of the Caribbean and uh, Central and S South America, Abiyala, in terms of these regions, everywhere where the African people landed and were oppressed and enslaved um, and put under great oppression, there was always resistance. And what better time to express that resistance but at remembered ritualized times of change. So annually, um, there would be a moment in which, and often associated with this time of what was referred to as emancipation, but which really, I mean, there were rebellions across the across the whole year and across the whole Caribbean and Abiyala. Um, so associated again with African people's resistance to the oppression that they were facing and the remembrance of their own culture and using the medium of our own cultures to resist and to rebel. And, you know, really that's the birthplace of carnival. Central to carnival is the idea of masquerade, the wearing of mask and the revealing of yourself. So masquerade was because, well, entirely as we can see, African culture is masked in so many ways in its expression. Sometimes it's fully there and it's obvious to see, but often we have to research and find, and there are so many scientists and historians, you know, always digging up, oh, this is the African side of this thing. But, you know, um, masquerade was, uh, you know, showing that we, you know, we have a culture, we have a strong and vibrant culture, but it has to be hidden. It has been hidden. But once a year, we're going to reveal and we're going to use it as a basis of our resistance and rebellion. Right. That's really, um, um, yeah, an interesting take, um, that one of masquerading but and the revealing. I think the point you said about African culture being masked in its expression. Because um, um, I know, obviously, with, with the Racial Justice Network, we talk about repair, we talk about remembering um, we talk about resistance. So all of those words, I think, feel like they've come through. Um, and that's why I was saying when I attended that documentary, the interesting part was understanding that it's it's an expression. So when we see the different outfits that are worn, some outfits actually have a purpose. And one thing that I learned, and maybe I don't know whether you know uh, of this, when apparently after... Um, and and I think the reason I said I was naive because I experienced uh, carnival for the first time, but there was a na sense of naivety of its origin until kind of obviously, and I, and I continued to attend every year until I watched and I explored a little bit more about its origins. But there was something about those who'd been enslaved um, and and kind of been, you know, had names taken from, uh, language, all of those things kind of like taken from them, but there'd been people who'd passed on, obviously, of the course of the year. 
So they hadn't been able to ceremonize or like do a ritual or the African rituals that they would have done. Um, so the, the, the carnival had something to do with also an opportunity to reconnect and, and say goodbye to um, the elders or those who's kind of like transitioned to ancestry. Um, do you kind of have any content around that one or is that something that's also unfamiliar? Because, oh yeah, so there was that and maybe, and then just another point of mimicking the masters. Uh, so like some of the expressions and the things that were done were mimicking some of the masses or the oppressors in terms of whilst they were held in bondage. Um, and I, yeah, maybe to if you can share a little bit more of that, if you know of. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the historical images of um, that kind of celebrations, ritualized celebrations around emancipation, there are all kinds of different kinds of festivities, not just the main carnival, um, in which people do exactly that, you know, this imitation of Bakra, and um, which was, you know, the, the name for the, the white colonizers who were in the practice of enslavement, but also the, those who emulated them and who also had enslaved people. So it's, it's um, as with all African cultural expression, it's not just what you see on the surface, is it? Mm -hmm. It's always lots of hidden and subterranean, multiple meaning, um, you know, spread across our practices, our various practices. And it, of course, because of the enslavement by all these other different European um, entities, you know, so you had the Francophone, you had, you know, the the, the Dutch and the, the English and others, um, you had these expressions coming through the filter of, of the colonizing culture and various kind of responses to it. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, every island has their own particular different expression and you you will have people enacting whole plays um, using different, the donkey comes into, into play. So there's mm -hmm. Jonkunu festivals in, in various islands um, as well, which is basically still an extension or a continuation of um, the kinds of basic masquerading theme of carnival. Um, but, you know, I think it's really important to notice that wherever our cultures surface, that there seems to be counter movements that evolve to criminalize our expressions. And that took place his historically. So, you know, John Kunu was banned. Uh, and the the you know the, this imitation and the of of the in, um, of the different um positions if you like positionalities of in within enslavement um you know when it made when it it created a feeling of shame and guilt it was immediately oppressed and this has followed through all the way through to the notting hill carnival in london and the various carnivals across the country in different areas where african people find themselves there um there's introduced you know, different reasons to criminalize and to put down and then to turn it into, to capitalize it, to turn it into a fest of capitalism. So this is, you know, this is always being resisted <laughs> and it's always being imposed. So it's like um, being alert to the processes by which expressions of our culture are so policed and they're policed because they evoke trauma in um, oppressive bodies by pointing to the the reasons for shame and the reasons for guilt yeah and um, you know one only needs to kind of really do a little bit of research into the depths of some of the kinds of different expressions of carnival to understand why the shame and the guilt would arise and why therefore those forces feel a need to repress it in different ways just as our languages were lost yeah mm -hmm. as you pointed out you know um and yeah you know the the symposium that is coming up is of course also addressing that yeah no that, that's kind of like yeah I think 
when you say the turn, uh, turn to first of capitalism, I'm like, that really tells it because, uh, and I, I'm hoping that we could also kind of, like I said, mention a Nottingham, Notting Hill Festival, Fest Carnival, uh, because what I think is seen as, it is a, a part of almost um, not performative um, or performativeness. So there's people who come in on just once a year to see and experience um, a, a watch or gaze at the culture, um, but then it's the amount of trade. So the, the first of capitalism is like the amount of business that goes on. And I'm not saying um, like who the business is with or with or with or who it's not with, but it's the 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 the, the, sim, the symbolism that's kind of been retained, but the origins of it. Uh, how many of us who attend these carnivals, how many of us are really aware of of those origins? Um, um, and, and also like to mention in the London one is I think, and this out, it was also interesting for me to learn that actually Leeds started and when the riots and things were like not in a good place down south, um, uh, the folk from Leeds went and kind of uh, met up, um, had discussions, and it's there that the transfer, at least a, an exchange or sharing of ideas happened with Grace Jones, who I'd like to bring into the room as well. Um, and how that now, obviously, what it is now, and in terms of what actually, what was the catalyst for that carnival to start in London, and why Grace Jones thought it was, or, or chose to do this, to kind of bring communities together, um, um, in ta yeah, to maybe to mention that a little bit. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think you're talking about Claudia Jones, right? Oh, wait, sorry, I Grace Jones is the actress. Yeah, it's Claudia Jones. Apologies. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, when she... Um, and being Trinidadian, Claudia Jones, although, you know, she had, she had been in America in between, um, understood the value of culture, yeah, mm. And even though, yeah, she she's a socialist, um, communist, um, being African means that she never let go of the importance of embedding and rooting the politics in the culture. The culture is political. Our culture must be political by default because of, um, yeah, <laughs> what we've been through. So um, the... The various cultural expressions of carnival were also cultural expressions of a rebellion and a rerouting of our culture amongst our population. So, you know, this was definitely part of her agenda. And, you know, in 1966, when the, the, the first of these events took place, um, you know, with a whole coterie of people that she was working with and, and various musicians, um, you know, taking, drawing strongly from the traditions of Trinidad, um, you know, the Trinidadian artists using the steel band and the steel band itself has its own history and the particular expressions of rebellion in, in that country and the the criminalization of carnival in Trinidad and this, they're, you know, morphing it into, you know, using sticks on, on drums. As a, you know, like how people beat sticks on drums as a way of calling attention to something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the same way in our got to produce music. I mean, how creative are we <laughs> that we could do something like that and turn it into an art form and make it the heart of our festival, you know, this festival or carnival. And calling, you know, it's like music is so important and resonant in our culture. And it's also a medium. It's, isn't it? it's a way of um, calling ancestors, you know, calling that spirit of rebellion and resistance and repair, the, the third important R, um, into our being. And so it's so important that, important that there's a reconscientization of people who come to carnival and even... You know, even the the populations, the the Asian and the European, that now you know attend carnival in their numbers, it's all important for them to revisit that, to recognize. Look, we haven't forgotten. 
Mm. You know, there is a lest we forget moment. You be here, you can come here and be witness, but understand it's talking to you and it's talking to, you know, the deep oppression that is still perpetuated, including in that capitalization. Look, you're trying to buy out our culture. What the hell? <laughs> this kind of happen, right? You know, yeah. so it's it's like recognizing that, mm. yeah, and, and you know, reaffirming the the root and the rootedness of this, you know, actually quite spiritual, powerful um, expression of our culture and why we keep on doing it. And why we need to keep, you know, like we keep keep on our toes and keep reinventing in different kind of ways. Mm. And, you know, like carnival in the future may not look like carnival in yeah. the past, yeah. but it still is always going to contain that protest. Mm. Yeah. And let's need to change. It's going to. And even when even when let's let's be affirmative now, when things change, <laughs> yeah. we will still need to remember because, you know, we've got to keep reminding people that mm -hmm. this thing happened in the past and it ain't gonna happen again mm -hmm. yeah we don't want it to happen again so people need to be reminded this is what is on the conscience the the global conscience <laughs> until it's re fully repaired and even when it's repaired we have to keep rem remembering so we, it doesn't reoccur cool that is a, a good yeah really good points there of even when people are coming and witnessing the need to remember and, and that one is carnivorous protest, uh, I think is a really good one. I think what you've just ended on is a good way to segue to the next part, which um, we were going to talk about, which is the symposium. Um, Dr. Christine is moved in closer. Um, and um, again, just for context, it's the, uh, the international delegation, the international symposium that we're holding this October around decolonization um, and there's a lot of, obviously, there's quite a few people involved, few people who are going to be speaking, but amongst them, um, uh, Professor Ngugi Wadiongo, who will be traveling from the US, and then the rest of the delegation will be traveling from Kenya. Um, and uh, both, again, I'm really lucky that I get to hang out and spend time and know people as friends, as family, as relatives even, um, who are involved in resistance, involved in decolonization, involved in all sorts of stuff that is to do with repairing and recentering our Africanness. Um, so um, both of you will be participating as, as people who are delivering, but are also holding this and have been part of the planning committee and the co-organizers for the delegation. So Mama D had done um, a, a little introduction. So I'm gonna ask you to do an introduction to yourself a little bit, and then we'll just get into it. We've got about eight minutes to kind of like pull this together, but con connect it back to what Mama D was just ending on in terms of, of we will keep coming up. We will, people keep reminding people to do things. So yeah, a little bit introduction of, who you are I know it's, it sounds weird when I call you Dr Christine when you're my mother but um just for the sake of our listeners who you are and what you do okay good afternoon thank you Penny for giving me this opportunity uh my name is uh Christine Kahige a lecturer a senior lecturer in the University of Nairobi um area of specialization sociology but uh, area of specialization as far as training is concerned, history. And um, I'm looking forward to coming in October to share what has been going on between the University of Nairobi and uh, RJN plus Manchester, where Penny is almost graduating with her PhD. Uh, glad that in the times we have interacted between the three institutions, if I may call them so, uh, we have uh, covered quite a lot in terms of decolonizing. And I see it relevant now to the Black history because during this time, we have addressed very many areas that have been lying uncovered that keeps us divided and ignorant. Uh, the black community or minority community 
in the Western countries, so in the diaspora, as you refer to it. And uh, the, the, the Black community in our own countries, where we have very different views of um, our brothers in the West, our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, including what they go through. Now, our main concern has been what has been perpetuated in the education system that we adopted from our colonial masters. We have addressed how much the academia should have done in correcting the errors and teaching the true history. And uh, because we have held two symposiums in Nairobi between us and uh, RJN and Manchester, there is a lot that we are coming to talk about in terms of resistance, remembering, and also repairing. And I'm hoping this is an opportunity that we shall come back with so much to see how far we will go and how far we have covered. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, um, and yeah, Mamadi, in terms of the point that you were making around language and how do you perceive or foresee this um, this symposium? Again, now I just keep pointing to how little time we've got, but yeah, if you can just delve into that or even if you have a, a, a comment from, for uh, Dr. Christine, then you can do that as well. Yeah, I'm um, just greeting <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Um, Kahiki. Um, really looking forward to um, meeting with you again and the rest of the delegation. This is going to be a, a really splendid reunion occasioned by Professor Wationgo because um, his work, which centers the repair work effectively by um, re-inhabiting our, our African celebratory and ritual um, cultures in all the different ways of expressing. So language I know is one of the key ones that he addresses, but it's it's really wholesale um, remembering ourselves. And I'm currently reading Secure the Base, which is a very powerful small book that he's written, um, which is asserting just that. And, you know, just like Carnival is again, is a, is a movement towards securing our base. It's like a regrounding. This symposium is another occasion to reground. And so I'm really looking forward to the opportunities that we make, we, we deliberately make to connect, to reconnect. You know, there's so many rewords, right? It's like doing things again. We have to do things again in order to make them solid, to make them like earth. And, and so I'm really, really looking forward to us making as many opportunities to connect across the Africa of the continent and the Africa of the diaspora diaspora to you know make new meanings going forward into the future about you know uh, this term that we have been coined with black um to either emancipate its meaning as understanding the darkness of the womb the place of origins the place of mystery that we still don't understand and that we still are researching on and yeah it's it's an origin place and that's really um important and so I think that's what we want to do we want to revisit those origins as um, places that there is opportunity to repair you know like melanin in the body is associated with repair when there is a wounding <laughs> so yeah it's like that we're, we're, we're reconnecting the, the melanin if you like um, the deep melanin the cultural melanin um, and yeah, this is occasioned by the, the good professor being able to um, to speak on, you know, his life's work of of doing that. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, the symposium is a great opportunity for that to happen. Yeah. So thank you again. Um, I'm going to ask for final words, uh, but I should also say to our listeners, the next Catalyst show will probably delve into a little bit more because you'll be even nearer to the date. We'll have the topic and the themes for anybody who'd like to visit or attend any of what we'll be doing. But yeah, final words from Dr. Christine. 
Okay, my final word is um, as I look forward, I may mention that Dudu Adiyongo is from Kenya, having resisted early before anyone else knew uh, what was left was damaging to us. He sought for asylum in the West, and now we are coming to continue the good work he has been doing from America in the West, where he studied in Leeds. So we have some pride, and uh, we hope we are going to emulate what we are going to learn, because this time we are going to interact with him face to face. Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, I, I'm, I haven't got anything more to add, but I really, I'm also really honored and and grateful for not just the symposium, but the interactions and the growth that I've had. Because you are both of you are two people who I yeah spent um a lot of time with and have shaped and structured a lot of my thought around this work. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, and um, yeah, until next time. Um, this has been BCB, the Catalyst Show, with Penny from the Racial Justice Network.